the Shiki Science Show clips. No, exactly. And personalized medicine is something that's also I find really interesting because you're right. We we are all different. We have different um, genetic variations. We all have different environmental factors that we're exposed to. We do different jobs. We eat different things. And so I guess another question um, is if we are going to kind of strive for like personalized medicine, what kind of things would we need to do in terms of biomarkers? Um, like I suppose the better way of phrasing it is what would be like the gold standard for biomarkers to be able to achieve personalized medicine? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question. I mean, you can imagine optimizing the aging biomarkers. And, but one thing about aging biomarkers is that we tend to think that biologic aging behaves like chronologic aging. You know, chronologic aging is just measured by time and goes steadily up. My guess with these biologic aging markers is that's not what's happening, that they're oscillating you know, and, and then depending on how much sleep you got, you know, whether you ate healthy, did you go for a run, you have, you have the, the a virus, you know, for, uh, and you might have be biologically 10 years different from one, from one two week period to the next. And so I, I sort of see it as, you know, as you get older, that oscillation may be increasing and eventually you cross some threshold and you, then you're also, hyperglycemic or something, you get diabetes. So I think that we really need to look longitudinally at these biomarkers because one time point may not give you a really good determination of what, of what your biologic age is. Uh, so if you're optimizing to that, you know, it might work, but the oscillation may cause problems. So what we're trying to do right now is, you know, for things like vitamin A, we know what the toxicity markers are. So we look at those. Uh, and, but we don't really know what vitamin A does to aging. So we're, we're looking at, we're trying to identify the right efficacy marker too. So we're looking at inflammatory markers and other things. But um, yeah, I, I think that that's one challenge right now to personalize drug dosing uh, is that we don't always know what we want to optimize for in the blood. And so we, that there's a little bit of science that has to go in to figure that out too. So what I'm, um are the kind of main biomarkers that you think at the moment are most effective? So I know there's a lot of talk about using the epigenetic um, aging clock. So would you be able to explain a bit what that is? Yeah, so, uh, you know, by, even around 2010, everyone was saying that the search for aging biomarkers is basically a failure. You know, we have things like walking speed and grip strength and time get up and go and um, a few other things that work particularly well in elderly populations. Um, but in terms of molecular biomarkers, none of them were that predictive, even telomere length. I mean, it does have some correlation with, with life expectancy, but it's not that strong. What happened is that uh, people like Steve Horvath and others, uh, they started collecting really deep data sets of genome-wide DNA methylation uh, and then had the person's age. And so they put age into the computer and then had the computer use machine learning to optimize uh, the, the state of methylation in all these different sites in the genome uh, to predict a person's age. So if your age is 50 and the biologic age says you're 45, you know, that really what that is is the error in the algorithm because <laughs> the algorithm was trying to predict chronologic age. But the argument is that the error is there because it's not really, can't really measure chronologic age, it's measuring biologic age. And so what that's saying is that you're actually aging very well. You're only 45 when you actually have lived 50 years. Uh, and that now there's a whole range of different evolved methylation clocks. That, and that's one of the things we're using in Singapore. I, I'll say, however, that it's still unclear whether there's anything special about methylate, DNA methylation. Um, there are clocks based on transcriptomics. There are clocks based on microbiome. Now there are clocks based on uh, metabolomics. Uh, and so it may be that, and, and like I said, there's a facial pattern clock. It may be that anything that you can get enough complex data and enough people and use the right AI, you can predict biologic age from. And so I, I think that's still an open question. Is there anything special about methylation? Um, but we're, so we're using the facial pattern stuff. We, we're doing complete blood counts because there's a company called Jero that's helped can do biologic age from that data. Um, we're collecting accelerometry data. We're collecting DEXA scans and immune markers and some of the more classic 
clinical markers. Uh, and the idea is to really merge all that together and see, you know, what we're what we're getting out of it. And, and are we looking at, you know, several sides of the same coin, or are we looking at completely different things, which would be kind of scary. So I hope that's not the case. So it's um, it, I, the first step is really to to bring these different biomarkers together and see how they interact. That's a really good answer. So um, I agree. I think the improvements as well. That it seems like every every few months there's a more, like improvement upon these different clocks in terms of their accuracy and their ability to um, integrate the different uh, markers together. And so I guess one um, issue in terms of being able to make these um, biomarkers scalable is to have a kind of cost effective. Um, biomarker and so obviously the facial um, patterns is something that anyone could just take a photo it seems quite easily scalable but in terms of like these more amix approaches how scalable do you think they are well first of all the collab we the collaborator we work with on the facial pattern is uh, jackie han at uh, uh, peking university and uh, it's actually uh, was originally optimized in the han chinese ethnicity uh, the uh, it doesn't work with just a phone picture yet. You need to re do a three-dimensional reconstruction that your phone can't quite, it's getting close, but can't quite do. Um, so it's not as simple, but I think phones will get there. And you know the technology may improve to use phone data as well. There are other people that have tried to generate clocks from phone pictures as well. Um, the, uh, uh, but you know, the, so, you know, the other stuff, methylation can now be done from saliva. Uh, so, you know, with the, with the, that's why we chose the particular methylation clock we did is you could send an envelope with a piece of paper along with AKG, this is for the company, and you could spit on the piece of paper and send it back in and the DNA is stable and, you, you know, so that's not, Maybe. that's very scalable. Uh, if you have to take a blood draw, it gets a little bit more complicated and, and we've just completely rejected anything that requires biopsies because while they may be more informative, uh, I can certainly do a lot with biopsies. I can't, people aren't going to get muscle biopsies. <laughs> you just won't do it. So, and you can't scale it anyway. So it, it's, I think that we're willing to look at those more complex things or things like DEXA scanning, but that's really for more for research purposes. The main goal of the biomarkers is, you know, again, something that everybody can do.